In this video, we're going to have a look at how to change the subject of a formula. Now, the subject of a formula is just a letter to which everything else is equal. So if you think of the formula for the area of a circle, A equals pi r squared, the subject there is A. If you think of the formula uh, r equals v over i, the subject there is r. So the subject is just this, the, the, the letter that represents uh, the variable to which everything else in the formula is equal. Okay. Now, there's not necessarily one rule that fits all um, formulae. So when it comes to changing the subject, what you've got to remember is that whatever you do to one side, you do to the other. And you've got to declutter um, the side of the formula which contains your desired subject. And you do that by undoing what was done to it in the first place, if that makes sense. So three um, rules that you can kind of consider. Um, if the desired subject is part of a negative term, or if it's part of maybe the denominator of a, of a, a term, then you need to try and rearrange it so that, that is no longer the case. Then once that's done, you want to rewrite the formula so that the desired subject is on the, on the, on the left-hand side. And finally, you want to isolate the desired subjects by eliminating the terms. And you've got to do this in the correct order. If you don't, then you're going to go wrong. So if you think about it, I mean, you put on your socks before you put on your shoes. So to undo that process, you've got to remove what was done last. So you take the shoes off and then the socks off. So we're going to have to undo um, what was done in the reverse order. Okay, so if we have a look at, at an example, um, things will become a wee bit more clear, hopefully. Um, if you're asked to change the subject of this formula to x, if we think about what happened to x, okay, now what happened to x was, to generate this right-hand side, what happened was x, you added y, and then after that, the whole thing got multiplied by 2. So what we have to do is undo the last step. So we have to divide by 2 first of all, and then we have to get rid of this, undo this, so you're going to subtract y. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, to do is I'm going to write it so that the desired subject is on the left-hand side. So I basically just write the right-hand side equal to the left-hand side. And then we just do this first of all, so we're going to divide both sides by 2. Okay, and that gives me x plus y is equal to p over 2. And then after that, I just need to subtract y from both sides. And if I subtract y from both sides, then we end up with x on its own, and they cancel out. So we end up with x equals p over 2 minus y. And that's you now with your formula rearranged so that x is the subject. OK, if we have a look at another example. <clears throat> this time we have to change the subject of this formula to e. Now again, think of what happened to e. e was first of all squared, OK? So it got squared, and then after that you divided everything by w. So that's what happened. So we have to undo that, and you've got to undo in reverse order, OK? So shoes off, then socks off. So we're going to multiply by w. That's what's the, the opposite of what was done last. And then we're going to have to think of, well, what was the, what's the opposite of squaring? And that is, of course, the square root. So I'll rewrite this so that the right-hand side is equal to the left-hand side. OK. And then what I'll do is I'll multiply both sides by w. So when I do that, whatever you do to one side, do the same to the other. They cancel. We end up with e squared equals r times w, and then we're going to square root both sides. So we square root both sides. So what happens is the square root of e squared is just e. So we end up with e equals, and then we square root the whole of the right-hand side. So it's the square root of r w, and that's u. OK? Now, if we look at this one, a is the square root of hw over 3,600, and we've got to change the subject to w. 
Now think about what happened to W. Imagine what happened to W to create this right hand side. W, first of all, it got multiplied by H. Then it got divided by 3600. And then the whole thing got square rooted. So we've got to do the opposite in reverse order. So the opposite of square rooting is going to be squaring. The opposite of dividing by 3600 is to multiply by 3600. And the opposite of multiplying by h is to divide by h. <clears throat> so if we write this with the right hand side equal to the left hand side, then we can make a start. First things first, we're going to square both sides. So if we do that, then we end up just with h w equals 3600, and that's going to be equal to a squared. Then we're going to multiply both sides by 3600, and that's going to give me uh, hw equals 3600a squared. And then finally, what I've got to do is I've got to divide by h. And when I divide both sides by h, what we end up with is w. And so we see that w is equal to 3600a squared divided by h. And that is your formula we arranged with w as its subject. Okay. Now, sometimes your desired subject is going to appear as part of the denominator. Okay, so all we'll do here is we'll try and address that straight away and we'll just think of f as f over 1 and think of this as a fraction equal to a fraction. So we're going to do cross multiplication and we'll just say that d squared times f is equal to gmp times 1, which is just gmp. Okay, now think about this okay um what happened to your desired subject your desired desired subject is d what happened to it it got squared and then it got multiplied by f so it got squared first and then it got multiplied by f so we deal with this in reverse order undoing it as it were so we divide by f first of all and then we're going to do the opposite of squaring which is to find the square root so first of all if we uh, divide by f, so divide both sides by f, that leaves us with uh, d squared equals gmp divided by f. And then all we have to do is just square root it. And if we do that, square root both sides, we get that d is equal to now because the whole of the right hand side is getting square rooted we do we include everything that we've got underneath the square root sign and that is easy done with uh, the subject now down as d okay let's try one more as an example um this time your desired subject is negative okay <clears throat> or it's appearing as a negative at the moment. So we'll try and deal with that first of all before we do anything else. So I'm just going to multiply the brackets and then think about what we can do to end up with um, x uh, being, being within a positive term. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to add ax to both sides. Okay, if I add ax to both sides, what happens is they cancel we end up with AB equals AX plus C. And now I'm kind of good to go. So what I'll do is I'll write the right-hand side uh, equal to the left-hand side. So AX plus C equals AB. And then we can just go from there. So what happened to X, our desired subject? To give this X got multiplied by A. And then after that, you added C. So we do the opposite. We do it in reverse order. So we remove C, choose off, and then divide by A. 
silk so, sock. So. Okay, so let's do that. Subtract C from both sides. Whatever you do to one side, do the same to the other. Okay, so they cancel. You end up with AX equals AB minus C. And then if you're wanting uh, X on its own, divide everything by A. So we've dealt with the C. We're now going to divide everything by A. So divide this by A. Divide the right-hand side by A. We end up with X equals AB minus C over A. Okay, so that's how you go about changing the subject of a formula. All right. Here's four examples for four questions for you to try yourselves. Um, pause the video at this point, see how you get on, change each one to the subject colored in red. Okay? And then you can check back and see if you've done it correctly once you've finished all four. Okay, so let's have a look at these questions. All right? Uh, looking at A, first of all, uh, what we'll do is we will write it so that we've got the left hand side, the right hand side equal to the left hand side, I should say. So we'll say one third for x plus five is equal to b. I think about, about what happened to x. First of all, x, you added five to it, then it got multiplied by a third or divided by three, if you like. So we have to do the opposite in the reverse order. So we'll treble both sides. That gives us x plus 5 equals 3b. And then all we have to do is take 5 away from both sides. So we end up with x equals 3b minus 5. And that's us finished. Okay. Let's have a look at the next one. Uh, we are looking to uh, change the subject to r this time. So again, I'll just write it so the left hand side, uh, the right hand side is equal to the left hand side. So a half of pi r squared h I might actually write, oh, well I'll just leave it as it is actually. It's equal to b. Now what happened to r? Well first of all r was squared, then it got multiplied by h, then by pi, and then got divided by 2. So what we'll do is I'll double both sides first of all, and that just gives me pi r squared h equals 2v. Okay, doubling it gets rid of the coefficient of one half. Now I can think of this as just pi h r squared equals 2v. Now pi h can just be thought of as um, some sort of coefficient. So to get rid of it, we just divide both sides by pi h, okay? So if I, at this stage, divide everything by pi h, what do I end, what do I, what I end up with is that these cancel out. We end up with r squared equals 2v over pi h, okay? Now, to get r in its own, all I need to do is uh, square root both sides. So doing that, we end up with r is equal to the square root of the whole of 2v over pi h. So you have to make sure you undo everything in the reverse order, okay? Now, question c. Uh, we'll do c here, d over here. If we do question C first of all, uh, if I write it, well, my desired subject is part of a uh, denominator. So think of this as f over 1. And then if I do cross multiplication, we'll say L squared times f is equal to 85,000w times 1. So we'll just write 85,000w. Okay? Now, what happened? to L. L got squared and then it multiplied by F. So we divided by F first of all. They cancel. We end up with L squared equals 85,000 W. 
divided by f. And then to get L on its own, all we have to do is square root both sides, and we get that L is equal to the square root of 85, 1000 to W, over F. And that's U. Okay? And if we go on to look at the last one, again, our desired subject is not only part of the denominator, it's also negative. So we get everything onto one level first of all. So we'll use cross multiplication. So we'll say a lots of c minus x is equal to b times 1, which is b. Then we'll multiply out the brackets and we'll say ac minus ax equals b. Now because I want my desired subject to be part of a positive term, I'll add ax to both sides. So they cancel out and I end up with ac equals b plus ax. Okay. Now I'm just going to write the right hand side equal to the left hand side. So we'll say ax plus b equals ac. And then we can, can go from here. We can say, well, what happened to x? x got multiplied by a and then you added b. So we have to deal with b first of all. So take b away from both sides. So ax is equal to ac minus b and then deal with the a, okay? You want x as your subject, so divide both sides by a, and we end up with x equal to ac minus b over a, okay? So that's how I would approach changing the subject of a formula. Um, get, get the subject, make sure it's um, not part of a denominator, make sure it's not part of a negative term, then write the right hand side equal to the left hand side, and then undo everything, un unpeel, um, if you like, everything away from that left hand side, so that you're left with nothing but the desired subject. Take it away layer by layer, and make sure that you're doing it in the correct order. Okay, so I hope that was helpful.